Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT, from weatherist.com here in Central Virginia, and the commander of chaos, Colonel Confusion, your captain of catastrophe. Let's talk about This Week in Weather, and we got a lot to talk about. Let's get right to it. First, here's our wonderful website, in case you haven't seen it yet, and uh, we have a lot of different products for you to take a look at. You can go here under subscriptions, a lot of snow removal, a lot of snow forecasts for you snow folks out there. Uh, also, don't forget the newsletter, $5 a month. You get a lot of information for the next three weeks. So uh, I think, you know, it's a pretty good bargain there. A lot of people like it. It's very useful all year round, not just for winter, by the way, all year round. All right, uh, let's take a look at the pattern. Here we go. All right, we have a terrible pattern in place. If you like winter weather and cold for the East United States or this, even the central U.S., and it's going to stay that way for the next 10, 12 days at least. But there are reasons to be a little optimistic down the road. So let's see what's going on here. In Alaska, down to British Columbia, you see all the greens and the blues here? That is a very deep trough here. So when you have a pattern like that, that means you have a negative P&A, a gigantic trough on the West Coast, and it extends up into Alaska. So the purples there and the greens, very strong negative anomalies. Uh, that means you have a negative, uh, you have a positive EPO. Uh, so uh, positive EPO means you're not getting any cross-polar flow uh, that you, from the Arctic into North America. And the PNA means you're getting Pacific flow coming in uh, not out of Northwest Canada. And that's not good for the central and eastern U.S. since that's where our cold weather comes from. Also up in Greenland, in the upper right corner here, you see this big negative anomaly there. That's a, a positive NAO. So there's no reason here to think anything good's going to happen with this map. And sure enough, now, if you're on the West Coast, if you're in central western Canada, if you're in the Rockies, this is a great pattern. So it all depends on your perspective. So this is the next 42 hours out. This is Friday afternoon and evening. Uh, the first piece of energy comes out of Colorado. You see that there and Utah, a little bend in the uh, lines there. So that's going to generate low pressure. Then there's another monster anomaly. Look at this in Anchorage, Alaska, up here in the upper left corner. The purples are. So that's going to be dropping down towards the Pacific Northwest. But that system of Colorado, that's going to generate low pressure, and of course you have the ridge over the eastern United States, so that low is going to track through the, into the Great Lakes, and we can see that here. Here's the European model, significant snowstorm, central and northern Wisconsin, southern Minnesota, west northwest half of Iowa into Nebraska, and then south and east of that you got rain, Chicago, eastern Iowa, all of Illinois, Missouri, the Ohio Valley, I mean, heck, you got rain in northern Michigan in mid-December, it's a warm pattern. And that low, this is the GFS, same sort of idea. It's got a little further east, but very strong agreement here, almost identical. So again, look at all the rain in northern Michigan. That's just, you don't see that all the time. All right, now what happens is that system, there's the upper air map here. You can see the green blob there approaching north of the Great Lakes, northeast of Lake Huron. And look at this enormous upper low here, huge vortex dropping southward uh, in the Gulf of Alaska, headed for uh, uh, Washington State, Oregon, and Northern California, and the Western United States. Now, what happens is, of course, that is the cold front. If you look at the green there over Lake Huron and the Great Lakes, and then the blue, uh, the bend of the lines all the way down to Arkansas, that's your cold front. And we can see what it looks like at the surface. This is now Saturday night. So ahead of this front, all on Friday and Saturday, temperatures are going to surge on the southwest winds into the 60s and 70s, especially on the east coast on Saturday from New York City all the way southward, uh, maybe 65 in New York City, but definitely from uh, Philadelphia southward 70 before the front hits. And then the front hits to get a lot of rain and thunderstorms. And there's some cooling behind the front. But I mean, look, you, even you got rain in Montreal on Saturday. Can you believe that? You don't see that all the time. All right, so now, this is now next Tuesday. So that big piece of energy talked about is now dropped into California, Oregon. I'm sure there's a big storm which is going to hit in this upper air pattern, California, Nevada. Massive snowstorm coming for the elevated areas, tremendous rains, high winds. This looks like a big deal. But look at the enormous ridge that the atmosphere has to uh, balance out. So the enormous, the dark reds and the browns uh, showing incredible positive anomalies in the Great Lakes, the Midwest, uh, eastern, uh, western Quebec, uh, New England. Very strong anomalies here. This is another round of really extreme, really warm temperatures here for mid-December coming. Uh, no doubt about that. 
And what happens is, now you would think when you see the blue colors here on this slide, uh, over California, Nevada, that's where your low is going to be. And that's going to track up over the top of the ridge. So the low is going to go from Nevada to Montana to Manitoba. And sure enough, there's the GFS showing the big monster snowstorm for the Rockies. And then the low is in Wyoming going into southeastern Montana. The European is showing the same sort of thing from early this morning. You can very, very close to good identical uh, maps here. Now, we do have big high pressure on both of these maps. Uh, there's one over at the, the great over southeastern Canada. Uh, the GFS, it does not bring the cold air southward. On the European, it does. So we get a little shot of cold here, uh, cold air uh, in the northeast and mid-Atlantic. You know, seasonal cold, no big deal. Uh, December 14-15. Uh, but look at these winds here, these lines, west of the Mississippi River in the plains. You have south winds from Texas to Manitoba ahead of this system in the middle of next week. So that's going to pull up a lot of warm air, and that warm air is going to get into the eastern United States after December 16th or 17th. Now that system pushes it to the east. We have two pieces of energy here, one over southwest Mont uh, Minnesota. You see the green there? And the other one, the western Dakotas. Those two little green pieces are going to merge, whammo, into a big system. You get a big blizzard here coming up. You'll see that in a second. Another system crashes into Oregon and Washington State. You can see the green there. And look at the dark reds and the browns from over Montreal all the way down to Virginia and Kentucky. Enormous ridge there, significant warmth. And again, your Greenland block is strongly positive. You still have your negative PNA. You still have the negative, uh, the, the, the anomaly in Alaska, positive EPO. So it's just a terrible looking pattern. And there's your blizzard on the GFS, day seven. Uh, it's way out there, but it's a lot of support for it. And you can see tremendously strong low uh, north of lakes, uh, northeast of uh, Arrowhead, Minnesota, or western Ontario, a blizzard in northern Minnesota and Manitoba here on December uh, 15 into the 16th. The Europeans showing the same sort of thing. A very powerful system. And then east of it, you get the southwest winds and warming temperatures. Now, the uh, Europe, the GFS uh, day uh, early this morning on this uh, Thursday, 60 run had a massive snowstorm right before Christmas here in the Mid-Atlantic and New England. Uh, it got a lot of people excited. Like 964 right over New York City. This is complete bullshit. And it's bullshit because the uh, models, the upper air pattern doesn't support it. You don't get this sort of stuff in phase seven uh, with La Nina. We just, you don't get it. It just doesn't happen. Sure enough, the updated version has high pressure. So you can, and that's, this is six hours later. So here's the 6C GFS, six hours later, it's sunny. So again, don't get worked up over the GFS beyond day seven. Uh, if you have to, you look at the European out to day 10, but you know even that is sometimes not that good. Okay, here's the MJO, you can see it right now is in phase seven, there you go. And it is gonna move, and phase seven is a little better than you know phase six, which we have been, which is why it's so warm. And now here on the left-hand side, here's the GFS Ensemble. Notice that for most of December now, it is in phase seven all the way to December 23rd. And the European on the right-hand side showing the same thing. The European Ensemble keeps it in phase seven all the way through December 23rd. So that's a little better. It's not great, but it's a little better. Now beyond that, uh, the Australians on the left-hand side clearly show the MGO going into phase eight in uh, late December, January. And the uh, experimental MJO from Kyle McRitchie showing the same sort of thing here going into phase eight at the end of January into end of December into January. Now, sometimes these, these two models run a little fast uh, with the movement, but they're both in very, very strong agreement. And you can clearly see that the GFS and the European are going to move the MJO into phase eight by Christmas. You can clearly see that. So what does that mean? Well, this is the upper air pattern in La Nina in January in phase eight. Enormous ridge on the west coast, not a trough, huge ridge. That's a big change. Neg you have negative NAO, big block over Greenland, and you have a huge trough on the on the east coast. That implies a pretty stormy pattern. Doesn't guarantee it, it implies it. So there's one thing. Now, if you look at our teleconnections, look at the Arctic Oscillation. Right now, on the left-hand side of the bottom, that's December 3rd. Look at the black line. Now, look at the trend here. As we go through by December 20th, everything is now negative on the Arctic Oscillation. That's a nice start. That's a big shift. This here is the NAO, strongly positive right through December 9th, and then and then it goes all the way up, reaching a max December 15, and then it starts to decline. So that by December 20th, all of these six models show that the NAO is now negative. You have a block over Greenland of some capacity, 
or at least a positive anomaly. The Eastern Pacific Oscillation, which you can see the uh, black line where it has been negative, goes positive here. You don't want that if you want cold and snow in the eastern United States. It gives you the strong positive at the top, top of the chart, December 11th, 12th, 13th, and then collapses rapidly so that by December 20th, most of the models either have a neutral or a negative, which is good. That means you're getting cross-polar flow. The real problem here is the P&A. It stays strongly negative all the way through, which means you're going to keep your trough on the, on the west coast. So that's going to be a problem. So uh, this means that uh, depending on how strong the block is, if the block in Greenland gets uh, very strong, that will suppress your southeast ridge, and you're going to have a lot of overrunning winter storms. But that's just you know speculation. But that's what it implies if it gets that strong. So, but in order to counteract this big trough on the west coast ridge on the east coast, you need a strong Arctic oscillation being negative and a strong NAO being negative. So. That's what that that's what that means. All right, now we go beyond that. This is now December 20th. Now, notice what's going on in Alaska here. You remember a couple slides ago when we had this huge negative anomaly? Let me show you what I'm talking about. Remember this? Yep, there you go. See that? Now look at the change here by December 20th. There. Big change, big change. Huge positive anomaly, the Bering Sea, northeastern Pacific, building into Alaska, and you're getting cross-polar flow. These lines are coming in from Siberia. And the ridge of the eastern United States is getting a little weaker. Still there, still strong, but getting a little weaker. You're also getting some ridging by Iceland. Maybe the NEO is going neutral at this point. Now, the GFS kicks out a low-pressure area, another one which comes out of the Rockies through the Midwest into the Western Great Lakes, more rain for the Eastern Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley on the East Coast, December 2021. Now, this may or may not, I don't know if the track here is right, but obviously, if you have a ridge here like this and a trough in the Rockies, you're going to have low-pressure tracking something like Colorado to Iowa to Michigan, you know, something like that. Not the exact track, we don't know, but that's what that pattern clearly supports. So the operational GFS solution here might be correct. It's a, it's a working idea. It's not, not out of the question. Now, this is the European Ensemble 360 hours out. The ridge is getting very strong in the Gulf of Alaska, pushing way to the north, and the ridge is getting flatter over the southeastern states. Not so there, not flat, but it's getting flatter. And this implies these low-pressure areas are now going to be coming down. You're going to have some cold air trying to push southward. So now we're getting some interesting possibilities here after, by the time we get to Christmas or right after Christmas, especially in the Great Lakes in New England. Maybe not the Mid-Atlantic Ohio Valley, but the Great Lakes in New England. Now the GFS is even stronger here. The GFS has a much stronger ridge, positive anomaly over Greenland. And the ridge over the southeastern states is much flatter. So this implies a lot more cold air and overrunning for everybody, let's say north of I-70. Maybe south of I-70, depending on the setup. So <clears throat> you can see clearly, so this would imply high pressure here over the uh, northern New, New England or southern Quebec, Canada, something like that, with some sort of cold air damming event. That's what it implies. We don't know if it's going to happen. Now, if we look longer term, you can see this. Uh, this is the hemispheric shot. This is the European. Again, this is the shot from here. It's just a bigger version of it. So hemispherically, we can see, see the big red in Alaska. See how it's pushing up towards the North Pole? And you see the one over Scandinavia pushing up towards the North Pole? If these two features were to meet, they split the polar vortex in half, which is already happening. That's why the Arctic Oscillation is going negative. The Arctic Oscillation is being separated into two pieces, one in Siberia, one in northern Hudson's Bay, Canada, or Baffin Island. If these two red areas were to meet, that polar vortex would be forced southward, the southeast ridge would be destroyed, and we'd be off to the races with a much, much colder, serious winter pattern. We don't know if that's going to happen. It's just possibility, thinking outside the box. Now, the GFS ensemble, the last slide here, is even more aggressive with that. The ridge, the block, the anomaly over Scandinavia and Iceland is much stronger. It's clearly building towards Greenland. And again, notice the southeast ridge is much weaker here. So, you know, this is December 23rd. So, again, all these reasons combined, I'm not that uh, negative about the winter. I know it looks tough now, but, you know, Christmas week it changes, and then we'll see what January has. Now, you know, if something changes and the MGO doesn't go into phase eight or something else changes, then we'll have to reevaluate. But I'm not giving up on the winter yet. I think it's no reason to do so. In any event, this is a meteorologist, a DT from Weatherisk. I will see you over on the uh, 
Twitter page and on the website and on the Facebook page.